All right, Mr. Nazario. So, back. let's go all the way back to square one, okay? I turned around on you at food line. I actually came out of cost plus, and I came up behind you. I, I you saw had, you before you turned. And you had no tags displayed. I, I see it, but per the law, it has to be in the license plate bracket. I understand it's paper, and I understand why it's there. Yes. But at that time, I had no idea. I didn't know that you had a vehicle registration until I approached your car. And at that point, I was too busy dealing with you to deal with the tag. You want me to wipe your eyes? Okay. So, look, all this was going to be was, hey, man, I stopped you. You didn't have a tag. You got your driver's license. I'd have ran you, and you'd have been on your way. Okay? What would have been a two-minute traffic stop turned into all this? As I was telling him, you know, I pulled over to well-lit areas before, and I've never looked out the window and saw a gun so, blazing so, in immediately. So, so, the, so the reason we did that is because we followed you for a mile and a half with lights and sirens on, and you didn't pull over. I understand you want to get to a well-lit area, a, a well area. I get that. But when we follow you that long, look at, look at the climate this day and, and against everybody, against us, against y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not out to hurt you, and I know you don't want to hurt me. That's not what it's about. What it's about is making sure that everybody goes home at the end of the day. So when you don't stop and you continue to proceed, our suspicions are raised. What's going on in the car? What don't he want us to see? So you pull into here, and if you would have just complied with the simple commands that we were giving you originally, it would have been done and over with. And you would have got back on your car and you'd be gone by now. But you wouldn't get out the car. You wouldn't comply. It was it just looking out the mirror and seeing your guns out already. That's what I was asking. Like, what's... What's going on? I was just and then and, and not to mention you have just confused. Not, just, I know you weren't reaching, but not to mention you had a gun at your right leg. You, you get our perspective though on the safety issue for us as well. You get that? Yeah, I, I, I do. I do, and and that's why I put my hands out and I was just asking what. And, you, and when you put your hands out, they were like this outside the window. How do we know nothing's in your hands? And I was telling you, stick your hands out, stick your hands out, stick your hands out. Then I was having you step out. You wouldn't do any of it. You following what I'm saying? Okay. So this can go one or two ways, okay? I, I don't want to hem you up. I'm going to be straight up with you. You're a good man. You've made lieutenant in the Army. How hard was that? That wasn't an easy task, was it? No, it wasn't. And, and what, would this, what would this do to your career? I heard it, and I'm in the, I'm uh, in the middle of getting promoted right now. Anyway, so yeah. To what, captain or first lieutenant? Um, to first lieutenant. Okay. So, you, and then when we get you out of the car, we have to wrestle with you on the ground just to get your hands behind your back, just to put you in cuffs, just for the safety matter. You follow where we're at. I mean, what, what would you do if you came across that overseas? You know, if you were infantry and you came across that. You follow me? Mm. You see where we're coming from? I'm trying to work with you as much as I can. I would have never wanted, like I said, it would have been a simple, you know, hey, I see your tag now. You know, make sure you get a display on in the proper spot and you'd have been moving on with your day and I'd have been moving on with mine. But here we are. All right, how's your eyes doing, Lieutenant? Better. And I keep calling you Lieutenant, I told you I'm a veteran, I respect rank, okay? I was a, I was a corporal in the Marine Corps. I respect rank. However, I do have a job to do, okay? I just talked about Chief of Police. You asked for a superior. He's off, obviously, right now. It's Saturday. I called him. He came out. talked. Here's how he... What I was thinking, I told him what I wanted to do. He said, that's no problem. Two ways we can handle this. We can either sit here with you until you get your eyes back where you can see, and I mean at a good distance, you're safe to drive, okay? And you're going down the road. Go do your deployment. Go continue serving my country, which I respect and I thank you for, okay? Or we can push the issue, write you tickets for no uh, license plate displayed and for resisting or not resisting obstructive justice. I don't think we need to go that route because that route makes the army get involved and I know how they are. The, uh, you don't know this. The arm, he'll, he'll vouch for it because um, he's been in and he's got friends that are legal officers. I know. The our military is the only we'll place. Where, eyes, okay. The military is the only place where double jeopardy exists legally. Because whatever we do, them, we do to them, the army can turn around and jam for the same thing. I don't want to see that happen. You're obviously a second lieutenant. You ain't been in very long. 
you plan on making a, a career or even six years or whatever, it's up to you. I don't care. There's no need getting this on your record. I don't want your record. However, it's entirely up to you. If you want to fight it and argue, I mean, and I, I don't mean it disrespectfully, okay? I mean, you have that right as a citizen. If that's what you want, we'll charge you, have you go to court, notify the command, do all that, or we can take, the, take time out of our night, which is not a problem. We get, we're, on the, we're being paid to take care of people, okay? We'll sit here with you, get your eyes back. You and, uh, what's your dog's name? Smoke. Smoke? That's a bad ass name for a bad ass dog. Um, you and Smoke can get on down the road, okay? It's entirely up to you. What do you want to do? I got no problem. I'll sit here with you till you get your eyes back and send you on down the road, okay? I don't want to charge you. I will. It's my job. I don't want to. The chief's giving me discretion on how to handle it. He's like, these are the two choices. I said, that's what I was thinking. That's what I want to do. He's like, not a problem. We can either let it go, help him out, get his eyes back, and get him on down the road so, not, so the army doesn't get involved, or we can charge you, and then it's a big hassle for you. It doesn't change my life one way or the way. Cause, you see what I'm saying? It's not about me. This is about you. What you want to do. If, it, if, if you want to just chill, let this go, and no charges filed, we'll take the handcuffs off, we'll get you a bottle of water to drink on, and sit here until you feel comfortable driving. All right? Mm -hmm. Or the other option is we write the summons, just charge you, have, and we, by then we have no choice. We have to notify your command. And again, I'm not, I don't have to be an ass. I don't have to be threatening. Uh, I say that because that's just the way it is. Okay? I just talked to my boss. Those are the two choices that he gave me. Personally, as a veteran who served, okay, I did my I did six years in school. My wife's a retired sailor. She retired as a uh, EA out of the Navy. Okay, I don't want to see you get jammed up by the army. Okay, I don't want to see it happen. If you need to spit, just let us know. Go ahead yeah. and spit. Because I we've both been sprayed, so we know what it's like. It sucks. If you need to spit, go ahead and spit. No, You're no, not going to offend us. Okay. All right. Um, what do you want to do, Lieutenant? I'll let you tell me because. I mean, no, nobody's going to ask for charges, so you know I'm not well, going to ask for that. I understand that. However, I have to make that option available to you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I have to. So here's what I want to do. Especially as, as, as calm as you've been since everything ended, I want to take the handcuffs off, let you sit here with smoke. We'll sit here and wait with you. Let your eyes come back. Okay, because it's going to take... It takes anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how much actually got in the eyeball itself, before you can really see well how to drive, especially at night, okay? We'll sit here with you, and then we'll get you on down the road. And the command won't know nothing about it. All right? I, I do have a good rapport with my command, so... I wouldn't feel right not talking to them okay. about it, so... Well, I, that's entirely I, on your... Gonna... I'll put it this way then for you. They're gonna hear from you. They will not hear from us. I give you that much respect, okay? Because I understand. I told you I was in for six years. It's always better for the command to hear it first from you than somebody else, especially the law enforcement. That's never a good thing. Go ahead, let's help. I want to talk to you a little bit. Okay. I get it, okay? I get the, the climate we're in right now. I get it, okay? The climate we're in. The, the what the media is spewing, with the race relations between minorities and law enforcement, I get it, okay? So like I told you, as far as you not stopping and because you weren't comfortable and you wanted a wellness spot, Lieutenant, that happens all the time. It happens to me a lot. And it's, it's I would say 80% of the time, not always, 80% of the time, it's a minority. And I just don't get it. 